Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Mark Steiner. Great to have you with us. There's a surge happening in this country that could have frightening consequences. One of the key political figures who represents that surge is Kansas Secretary of State Chris Kobach, who is the Republican candidate running to become the next governor of Kansas. With Donald Trump's backing and blessing, all across our country right now, right-wing media people and significant conservative figures are using isolated instances of violence by a few immigrants to marshal forces for anti-immigrant surges around this country, reminiscent of the worst parts of our history. It is like the know-nothing seizing power once again in the United States. Chris Kobach has been foaming at the mouth about immigrants when Donald Trump was still a Democrat. Now he has white nationalists who work for him and write for the most vile, racist, and anti-Semitic organizations in this country. To discuss all this with us, we have Cristina Lopez. Cristina Lopez is the Deputy Director of Extremism at Media Matters, where she's worked since 2014. And welcome, Cristina. Good to have you with us. Pleasure to be here, Mark. So let's, let's start with this. I, we, we talked before we went on the air together here. I, I was mentioning I thought that we are in the midst in this country right now, um, of this wave of anti-immigrant fervor being pushed by right-wing bloggers, by a lot of conservative political figures and thinkers and others in this country that are taking a few isolated instances of immigrants doing harm to another human being in our country as a way to, to protect, defend ICE, but really go after immigrants. So what, how, what do you think is happening right now? So this is the issue, like like you very well framed it, what right-wing media is doing right now is trying to find a couple data points so that they can build this narrative and kind of back up this narrative of criminalizing an entire population of immigrants. And, and they're doing this so that they can provide to their audiences uh, a way of kind of framing the issue of immigration as a national security issue instead of as a human issue. And so when you do that, you kind of forget that immigrants, you kind of dehumanize immigrants and present them as a threat. And, and this is something that um, in, the, in the past couple of years, you've seen increasingly right-wing media devote a lot of attention to this sort of framing. If, if there is a crime story that could be framed as an immigrant story instead, that's exactly what, what happens. And, and it's definitely misinforming their audiences because in reality, if you actually check statistics, you wouldn't find that the immigrant population um, it commits crimes at a rate that is different than other populations to compare them with. And in fact, uh, it's not what data shows, but that's not what you would get from watching right-wing media. And that's where the misinformation comes from. So let's examine one of the key figures here in the news right now, and that's Chris Kobach, who hopes to be the next governor of Kansas. Many people hope he's not going to be the next governor of Kansas. As a matter of fact, many Republicans were just completely shocked that he won uh, in Kansas, uh, because Kansas is one of those states where many of the Republicans are moderate-thinking Republicans, conservative, moderate-thinking Republicans. And this was like right. a shock to their, 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 their entire uh, system when he won that primary. But he's been, the, the, the investigative stuff about his staff is really revealing about who he is, where he wants to take Kansas, where he might want to take this country of ours, uh, in terms of the white nationals working on his campaign staff. What do we know about that? So this is the issue. Besides uh, being a political figure, Chris Kobeck is also a right-wing media figure. And an extreme right-wing media figure at that, because he, he is a paid columnist for one of the most virulently anti-immigrant outlets in the country, which is Breitbart News. And as you know, like as a, a Breitbart columnist, he, um, we at Media Matters have reported previously that in his columns, he has copy-pasted legitimate, like copy-pasted statistics that are made up that can actually be traced back to a white nationalist. And it, this is, in one of these statistics, actually, it, this made up anti-immigrant statistic, he also took it, not, not just published it in his Breitbart column, but also took it and it appears in his campaign website. Um, it's right there in his campaign website. So if you want any indication of uh, the kind of campaign that this person is running, all you need to do is to check his media record because he very transparently has uh, sourced some of his columns from talking point that talking points that come legitimately from white nationalists like uh, Peter Demma. 
Right, and that was going to bring his name up next, with Peter Gemma. Gemma, right. Gemma, however you pronounce his name, uh, who has really written, as I said earlier, some of the most vile racist pieces uh, for many organizations and is like a protege of this fellow Sam Francis, who is right. this godfather to a lot of racist thinking in our country that many people don't know about unless you're in that world. So, but, but the fact that he took his lies and made them as fact, I mean, this is the beginning of how of how I hate overusing the word fascism, but this, they, but it's 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 how these things begin because people buy into the lies. And this this lie is actually connected to to your first question to the way that the immigrant population is constantly criminalized and framed in a in dehumanizing ways. And so this statistic that Kobach literally lifted from Peter Gemma, who was connected, as we know, to uh, the virulent, extreme uh, white white supremacist crowd with um, their Holocaust denials, and and he was connected to a group, the um, the Council of Conservative Citizens, who in in their in their mission statement had that they opposed any sort of mixing of the races of humankind. So it doesn't it doesn't get more white supremacist than that. But this this statistic specifically. Um, is related to the number of immigrants who are criminals. And it, it says, uh, according to the, and, and it's cited on Kobach's website, and it has appeared in his paid Breitbart column, um, which is a lot about the, their fact-checking systems. Um, and the statistic is that uh, 70% of those on the most wanted lists in LA, Phoenix, and Albuquerque are undocumented immigrants. And if you start digging in, you see that there's actually no official sourcing that can support that claim. Um, none of the police departments of these cities uh, have any data that can actually support that, that claim at all. And it's being used to fear monger about immigrants. So let's, let's talk a moment about what this might mean. If, you, if we have a candidate here, a major candidate in this country, running for governor of a state, Kansas, and he has white racist and nationalist, avowed racist and nationalist writers, thinkers, and leaders in his campaign. And they've identified at least three or four people who fit that description, plus his own words that he's used over the years. Um, and he's kind of, and, and very typical, I think, of, well, let me come back to the very typical point in a moment, but the, the, of a feeling like this actually winning as governor. When people like Chris Kobach become governors and senators, what do you think of the political consequences for our country? Well, this is the thing. We've seen lately a lot of... It's, it's not that we didn't have an extremist faction in this country. It's not that white supremacy is a new thing. Right. What we're seeing right now is, is a mainstreaming and a normalization of white supremacy and uh, a false narrative of, fall, of white grievance that wasn't as emboldened before. And we're seeing it because there are a lot of uh, media, powerful networks uh, that are mainstreaming these talking points. And you saw it a couple nights ago with Tucker Carlson, in which in the one of the most uh, viewed shows of prime, prime time, he aired a segment that was motivated by a, 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 a years old white supremacist talking point, which is the supposed white persecution going on in, in South Africa. There are actually no statistical evidence that can actually support the claim that there is white oppression going on in South Africa, specifically when you consider the historical context of an apartheid going on and, and only recently, uh, a few decades ago, still, still held in place. Um, this segment is something that aired on, on national cable news. And this is a segment that the president watched and tweeted out without any uh, you know, support, of, with, without any evidence. And we're talking about uh, the person who controls one of the most powerful intelligence agencies in the world, and yet is a person who's also relying on Fox News and right-wing media to make policy decisions and, and to kind of decide where the priorities of international relations uh, should go. And, and which is no question why someone like Chris Kobach would be less inclined to hide these sort of ties to white supremacy, which in the past would have been, you know, frowned upon. Now there's sort of an emboldening and, and a mainstreaming 
because they're they're starting to realize that because of the cover that right wing media is providing in which right wing media is constantly telling the audiences that this is actually not extreme that this is actually not wrong that there is an actual persecution uh, happening against white people in this country uh, this cover that they are being provided with is being very useful in in taking away those consequences that would have otherwise been attached to getting alliances with the most extreme factions in the country. And, and you're seeing it too with um, people who are who are actually elected officials. Uh, you have Representative Steve King in Iowa who very uh, who often will retweet people who are actual neo-Nazis with no consequence coming from either media or his party. And, and this is the sort of kind of things that have paved the way for people like Chris Kovac to be uh, unabashedly and unapologetically tied to the most extreme factions. And we've seen, as you just mentioned a moment ago, we've seen Donald Trump in his retweeting of the South African lie that was told, as well as what he said in West Virginia about the beautiful young woman who's killed, how terrible our immigration laws are, that, that he foments this kind of feeling in our country when people like Kovac fuel it. Right. Um, and that that and then you had this coming from the highest point in American government. So I and go ahead. I'm sorry. It's it's definitely thanks to the cover that's provided by right wing media. If you turn on Fox News every night, if you watch the Laura Ingraham show, if that is the sort of bubble where you get your news, that is what you're hearing every day. That uh, there's an immigrant taking your job, or that there's an immigrant who is just waiting for you to jog by and, you know, become a threat to your security and your life. And so in a way, all these, all these narratives that are so prevalent in right-wing media are allowing and paving the way for candidates to kind of be able to, to put in place policies or suggest policies that would have otherwise been out of, out of place in, in a couple of years ago. And, and this is why you, you probably saw a couple of weeks ago when Laura Ingram went ahead and uh, blamed the demographic changes in America for, for basically changing the country, basically saying that the America that she knew and loved uh, wasn't going to exist in a couple of years because of the demographic changes. And it doesn't get more white supremacy than, than that, basically, that, that talking point to say that the changes brought in by multiculturalism or by, by demographic change are bad changes per se, just because they're going to uh, change the, the way that America looks. And that the, the way that this is framed is presenting audiences with an idea of America where the normal is white, where the, where the baseline is white, where um, the factory settings is white. And, right. and it's sadly not what it actually responds to the demographics of, of, the, of America. If you go out in the streets, that's not necessarily what you see, but that's not what audiences of these shows are hearing. So two very quick things here as we conclude. Um, it's interesting to me that, that many of people like Chris Kobach and others uh, in that movement, they often find people of color to be their spokespeople, which is supposed to ameliorate their racism. Um, so it's, it's a... a it's, it's a very useful technique. This is not to say that uh, communities of color or all immigrant communities necessarily are monolithic and oh, think no, the same. Oh, no, absolutely not. Absolutely the not. issue right. is that right. it allows them, it sort of like opens a door and allows them to say awful things if they, they are tokenizing this figure by claiming that because this figure is in their campaign or this, this person has been given like a, a prominent... Uh, place, or if they are in a media panel with a person of color, like they are some, somehow allowed to say things they wouldn't say otherwise. And this is this is a technique that that is often deployed to uh, all over right wing media, and that you see consistently happening also, like in in, pod, in right wing media podcasts and in uh, right wing like right wing extreme right YouTube channels. We're bringing in somehow like tokenizing uh, an individual of color or a member of a, a community, a minority community, is somehow a, a, a permission to state the most awful things against that entire community. And the issue is that it doesn't show uh, support or validation for the talking point. It only shows literal tokenization, tokenizing 
in the most blatant and, and awful racist way. So, so f finally, in the, to conclude here, you said something earlier before we went on the air that I'd like to listen the viewers to, to hear, um, which was the Univision, Univision that that uh, the, the Spanish-speaking journalistic network here in the United States, where a lot of immigrants watch, a lot of people watch who speak Spanish, did a story on Chris Kobach a number of years back that delineated all this stuff, even before right. most of us knew who he was. So that's the thing. Chris Kobach uh, might have just recently, you know, gotten more attention from national news media because of his uh, links to Donald Trump and his immigration platform. But the issue is that Chris Kobach has been around and has been proposing and, and inspiring a lot of anti-immigrant policies that media need to make very clear to their audiences where, where these are coming from. And this is something that Univision a couple of years back did really well in a segment in which they uh, talked about all these anti-immigrant policies and explained that they were the brainchild of Chris Kobach, that they could all be traced back to this person who not only was had you know a position of power in uh, the, the Kansas government, but also was a right-wing media figure uh, and, a, and a paid Breitbart columnist. And, and policies like that you wouldn't usually connect uh, necessarily to Kansas, but that he had a that he had a hand in. For example, uh, the Mitt Romney self deportation uh, talking point came from Chris Kobach. That Arizona Papers Please law, I don't know if you remember that from a couple yes. of years ago. That came from Chris Kobach. That awful dehumanizing idea of actually uh, paying for anti immigrant policies by um, taxing or taking from immigrant remittances, you'll know that a, a lot of the um, economies in, in, Latin, in immigrant from immigrant communities um, are pretty much held by the money that immigrants here send back to their countries. A lot of uh, these countries' economies uh, get significantly boosted by these contributions that immigrants make. And to tax them for the sake of Enforcing anti-immigrant policies, it's, it's just so dehumanizing. And that was one of the ideas that Chris Kobach was proposing to then-candidate Donald Trump. And Univision did a really good job of, of putting a face, basically, to these policies, because a lot of people in the, anti, in, in the immigrant community wouldn't necessarily know who this person is or necessarily follow uh, Breitbart news and, and understand that this columnist is actually also very embedded in the anti-immigrant community, in the anti-immigrant movement. Well, Christina Lopez, it's been great talking with you. This has been a fascinating conversation. I appreciate all the work you've done in this area and uh, for sharing it with Thank our you. viewers. Uh, pleasure to be here, Mark. Thank you so much. And I'm Mark Steiner here for The Real News Network. Thank you so much for joining us. Take care.